Hi, my name is Carolina and welcome to my very first episode of this podcast in English. As some of you may know, I have a podcast in Polish because I am Polish, but I decided to give it a try and release two episodes in English. First of all, there have been many requests for me to do that. And second of all, I did two interviews with exceptional guests, one from the US and one from Israel, and I would love to share them with you. As both conversations are in English, it made perfect sense for me to do my intros and outros in English as well. Has anyone counted how many times I used the word English? Anyway, um, moving on, I had a pleasure to interview experts, mainly doctors, during the second Congress for Integrative Medicine in Warsaw, and I am sharing them as part of this mini-series on my podcast. Unfortunately, almost all of them are in Polish, but I have two exciting ones coming in English, so let me introduce my first guest, Dr. Yair Maimon. Dr. Maimon is an internationally renowned figure in the field of integrative and Chinese medicine with over 30 years of clinical, academic and research experience in the United States, Europe and Israel. Yair Maimon integrates complementary and Western medicine in his own unique way. He combines a vast background of TCM styles and a wide clinical and teaching experience. In our short conversation, Dr. Maimon explains the idea behind his lecture that he gave during the Congress. I also ask him about his definition of integrative medicine and what he thinks should change in the medical system and the general approach to health so that it becomes more holistic. So for those that didn't have the pleasure to um, participate in your lecture, sure. could you give us a brief explanation of the topic? So what was sure. the main idea behind your, your lecture? Well, there is there's few. I mean, I'll try to start with one, but then I'll break it to few ideas. Uh, because the topic of this Congress was on future medicine, so I focused very much on seeing a patient as a whole. Um, we found, you know, uh, medicine, as Western medicine in the last 80 years started to separate, you know, people into segments. And, and I think I'm coming from a tradition of Chinese medicine, which is very much seeing human as a whole. Uh, and I've been practicing in the hospital and, you know, as you heard, doing a lot of research. And I think we are trying to bring back the sense, uh, I can say, few key points. One is that humans are a whole. So they, are, they live in the body, they have their mind, and as I stressed here, there's something even above it and there is a healing process. So humans are made out of uh, bodily parts, but also mental and belief parts, and you can't separate them. If you separate them, it's not a human anymore. You know, it's, uh, it's like somebody lies unconscious. You give him the same medicine as the someone who is conscious, but not in my mm -hmm. medicine, right? Because the conscious part has a lot of meaning and uh, has a lot of ability to heal. So this was one thing that I talked about. The second is the wisdom of nature. I'm coming again from uh, a tradition of Chinese medicine, so we look very much into understanding, in my case, the value of different herbal medicine and herbal combinations in supporting the immune system, treating cancer and preventing, uh, hopefully, cancer. So there is a lot of wisdom in nature and in natural medicine that should be utilized for patients. And what I've been doing over the last, I can say, more than 20 years is trying to bridge this gap. There is wisdom, there is healing, and there is a potential for better health. And the reason people don't use it in normal medicine is because lack of research. It's not that there is a lacking, but it's just lacking of research. So what I've been doing is doing very extensive research and incorporating different um, also medical and research facilities all around the world. The one in Poland, I told you, was this one formula that we've been researching. It's called Protectival. We did even in the Aguilonian University. We look at the, um, the way it affects uh, immune cells. So we went into the cell, and we look at all the proteins in the cell, how the herbs are affecting it, 
how this one formula protective valve, how it is increasing the immune activity and in the same time reducing inflammation, for example, reducing the tendency for cells f to cancer. So we've been incorporating this research into one formula showing it's strengthening the immune system, it's killing cancer cells selectively, so not affecting mm -hmm. normal cells, only cancer cells, and also protecting the body from side effects of chemotherapy and other. So this is something I've been doing with one formula, this LCS-101, or a protective all over the last 20 years almost. And um, our results hopefully will be, w and now it's the most researched formula in the West of herbal medicine. So I hope that these results will help to change and the way a natural medicine is seen and will be incorporated into the normal healthcare system. Exactly, that's one of the questions that I wanted to ask you. How do you see uh, the future of medicine in terms of what should be done to the system so that it has a more holistic approach? <laughs> it's really one word, openness. Uh, I've been working all my life in a hospital. Uh, it's about almost 25 years ago, they looked at me as a strange one. Uh, and only one hospital and one doctor they allowed me in. Uh, later, there was, some, there was some interest, and now there is cooperation. And integration and cooperation is what is needed. And in order to have integration and cooperation, you need openness. And in order to have openness, you need to trust. And as it is a Congress for Integrative Medicine, sure. do you have your own definition of integrative medicine? Uh, mm, no, I think the integrative medicine, the word itself, um, well, maybe yes, I don't know if it's my own, but I think it's maybe another kind of adding up to the word integration. And that's what I said before, when if I fully trust Western medicine and Western medicine fully trusts my medicine, we'll always see the benefit of the patient. If I think I have something extra and the other one doesn't have, and it goes both way, then we are both on the two sides of the wall. You know, I know the truth, you don't know the truth, you know, and you know how it starts with humans when they don't communicate and don't trust. If there is a, the right trust, and one of the way that Western medicine will trust more the Chinese and natural medicine that I do is obviously through more research. But on the other hand, research is endless. You know, at some point, the belief system and trust is as important as the research. So once we provide with enough data and hardcore research fact, there is a need from the Western medicine to want to integrate. Yeah. Because it's, as I said, we can want to integrate, but the people who are making the decisions are the p p political people, you know, the health ministry, and eventually doctors and, and uh, so health ministers, head of the health ministry and hospital managers and, and health system managers. They are the ones that are making the policy. If they are willing to integrate, there will be a lot of integration. The, the general public already decided. It's a grassroots movement. People are voting with their legs. Like for breast cancer or cancer, breast cancer is, I know the statistics very well, 80 to 90 percent of breast cancer patients go also for natural medicine parallel to Western medicine around the world. I don't know the statistics mm -hmm. in Poland, but generally I can say high percentage. Yeah, but and sorry to interrupt, but is it? Yeah, go ahead. It's not because of. Um, so well, the health system is not helping them. They have to go. That's like, what I mean. So the, the patient decided. Yeah. But the doctors and health system needs to be open and trust and give it a chance. Because eventually, we are all doing work for the patients. It's not the opposite. You know, we are just service providers. I mean, a doctor, if patients don't come to him, is <laughs> doesn't have <laughs> nothing to do. So we are doing the service for the patient. And I think the patients, in, in the right way, making this decision to integrate medicine. Western medicine answers certain part. Natural medicine or Chinese medicine answers other parts. I, you can't say this is better than this, but when they integrate, you get a better system. Yeah, it's Always. very interesting because what you say is exactly what um, Dr. Smith said, how yeah. it comes from the people now, but it needs to be 
proven by the research so that the system can finally change. But just uh, to finish, I would like to ask you about your roots. And so what made you interested in Chinese medicine in the first place? I never made any major decision in my life. <laughs> also, Chinese medicine, I didn't make the decision. Uh, it's about 30 years ago, uh, somebody just told me, because uh, I was interested in medicine, but in also in medicine which goes beyond the normal medicine that looks into human suffering mm -hmm. and that tries to understand the real essence of healing. And somebody told me, you should study Chinese medicine. There was no Chinese medicine in Israel, no one at mm -hmm. that point. So I went to England and started to studying, uh, you know, medicine and Chinese medicine. And this was my calling, inner calling. So I, as I say, I never really made the decision. But I found that once somebody told me that this is what I should do in my life. And since that moment, never had any doubts, you know, about it. That's very inspiring. Thank you thank so you. much. That's, well, that's all you. I need. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast. If you want me to produce more content in English, rate and review this podcast or just leave a comment under this episode on YouTube. I release new interviews every Monday at 4 p.m. Until next time.